Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. My name is Ian and you're watching The Weekend Painter. Today I'm going to show you three different techniques for painting melter gun barrels. But before we get on with that, please hit the bell icon, subscribe and give the video a like. Okay, so for this technique, or these couple of techniques that I'm going to show you, you're going to need a few different washes. You're going to need Raglan Flesh Shade, Druggy Violet, Drakenhof Nightshade, and Null Isle. That's going to be for the first few techniques, and the last technique I'm going to show you, you're going to need either Abaddon Black, or a black paint, uh, or a black weathering powder. Either of them can do the same job. I'm going to show you both ways just in case you've not got any weathering powders. So to start with, all of the Melter gun barrels were given a coat of Canatep Alloy and then a light shading with some Nalil. Just so the details could stand out on the camera, just so you could see what was going on. But you can start with any bright silver, any bright silver you want as long as you've got the metallic color on the end of the barrels. So this first technique is gonna be the muzzle bin, going through the different colors. Starting off with Reglin Flesh Shade, and we're gonna apply it to the end. Just to open the pot there. We're going to apply it to the end of the model. So we're not going to go all the way to the base of the melter. We're going to start from this end and we're going to go up. We're going to go about two thirds of the way up. Find enough brush. And we're going to start from about here. I don't want to go up to the end. Like I say, I want to leave that bit. All the, the metallic alloy color. I'm going to start to glaze it on. You don't want to paint the loads on like a wash and stick it on really thick. You just want to start to build these colors up nice and gradually. This is quite a popular technique these days. There's quite a few videos showing you how to do it. And it is really simple. So I'm letting it pool in areas and I'm dragging it around. I'm just making sure that it's not leaving those tide marks, those water stains. Just making sure it moves a lot. And this is only the first layer, so you won't be able to see it too much just yet. But these colours are going to build up. Now that's dry. I'm going to put on a second coat, exactly the same, up to the same point, using the same colour. And this is just to reinforce it. The first one's like a glaze and it's really thin, you can still see the metal through it. The second one reinforces the brown and really stains the metal. And it's that simple. Second coat. Leave that one to dry. So now that second coat of Reckling Flesh Shade is dry, I'm going to go on to Tricky Violet. And in this technique, I'm letting each layer dry before adding the next. In the next technique I'm going to show you, I'm going to blend them together when they're wet. But with this one, I'm showing you how to do it with dry. So we're going to go closer to the tip this time, so almost halfway to the model, almost halfway through the barrel, so that now I've got a band of the, the Canatep Alloy, then a band of Reglan Flesh Shade, before you start to see the Druki Violet. 
in the same technique, very gently glazing it on and keeping it moving around. Now with this being a darker colour, it takes to it really well. Plus it's going over the regular flesh shade, it's not going straight over silver, so it's got a darker base as well. So each stage we go, we're getting darker and darker. So I'm going to let this dry before moving on to the next stage. And with the purple drying, we're going on to Dragonhof Nightshade. And this is going to be exactly the same technique. Just repeating the same process a couple of times in a row to build up the layers and the colors that you want so very little on the end of my brush and this time i'm going to go halfway between the, the muzzle end and the purple so again i've got a thin line of each color and we're just starting to shade the ends Give that nice little transition before we apply the black. You could go straight for black, depends on how many layers of transition you want to go for. So there's that. Very subtly building up the colours towards the end of the melt again. Let that dry, we put the last stage on. In the final bit, we're going to use no Nile on the very edge. This is just to represent the soot or scorch marks or anything that would build up on the end. Good for flamers, melter guns, that sort of thing. If you're doing any other type of gun, you might want to stop at the blue or the purple. It's entirely up to you. But the black always looks good on any heat based weapons. So I'm just doing the end now. Almost halfway between the purple and the tip. Uh, sorry, the dragon of nightshade and the tip. So it's less and less each time. There you go. So that's the first way. Really simple. Going through a few layers. Let each layer dry before you apply the next and you'll get this distinct band in on the model. Which looks pretty cool. The next stage I'm going to show the next way I'm going to show you is to use the same colours in the same order, but we're gonna apply them when they're still wet. It's more of a wet blending technique. So for this technique, it's the same. We start off with the kind of tip alloy over the end of the gun with a light wash of null oil, just to make the details stand out. And here I have all of the paints open at the same time because I'm going to be quickly going from one to another. I don't want to have to be stopping to open the lid, close the lids. I haven't got that much time. So I'm going to use them one after the other pretty much straight out of the pot. So the first thing we do is we're going to load up some regular flesh shade. And so we're trying to make the pot stay open. That'd be great if Games Workshop would change their pots. We can hope, can't we? So I'm going to load up my brush. I've got a little bit more than last time. And I'm going to go from the same point, two thirds of the way up the model. This time I'm going to be brushing it down towards the end of the model. And as you can see, that's gone on a lot thicker than the last time. I'm not doing it in such a controlled stripe. I'm just 
covering the whole if you think of the, the bottom two thirds with the shade I'm going to just wick away these little pools because the next colour I'll pull in there and then the next one would and the next one would so I want to try and get them out of these little recesses just because I can mess it up for you okay that's the first one down and it's still wet Drooky Violet a little bit of Drooky Violet on the brush kind of need less of this one again because it's darker so we're going to go halfway up the model this time straight down now this starts to mix in with the previous colour and you start to get this weird mix of them both there you go, that's better I'm going to wick away these little bits with a dry brush I've dried the brush off in a piece of tissue and just stick it into the pools and it sucks all the water up next stage dragging off nightshade again still wet I'm going to put this on closer to the edge you can see how this one's much quicker than the last version. You don't have to wait for the stages to dry. But you can also see how it, each successive layer is washing away a little bit. The layer underneath. And if you like that look, then that's not a bad thing. Recesses. and now the final bit the non oil so the non oil goes on the end and all the other ones are still wet and because they're all wet you get the you get the ability to play around with it add more non oil and it'll start to soak up the lines here mixing in As long as the end is darker than the beginning you kind of achieving the technique you want it's a lot quicker but you get less control you can go back and forth like now I'm using back to the null the dragon off nightshade I'm just adding in a bit more blue Back to the Juggy Violet and I can drop in Violet if I want. You can really play around with these colours when they're wet. Just mix them. Almost like treating the model like it's a palette. Play around until you get the colours that you want. So there you go. That's quicker than the first way. And you get to play around with it more some people prefer it some people prefer the first way but now I'll move on and show you the third way so this third way different technique altogether we're going to be using weathering powder we've got the model painted in Canatep Alloy non lyle wash same as usual with this I'm going to be using a small dry brush from Artis Hobby and I'm going to have a little pot of weathering powders and I just need if you can get the, there you go focus on I just need a tiny bit like we've got this tiny bit here a few little powders on the end what this is going to do is just work it into the edges so just the ends where the muzzle burn would have happened has gone really dry and they start to crumble 
And this is a real gradual technique. You want to build up little bits at a time. And just work those parallels in. As you can see with each pass we do, each time I apply powders, little bits at a time, it gradually gets darker and darker. So we don't have the discoloration in this one. We'll do the purples to the browns. This is just straight onto scorch marks. Which is pretty good if you're doing exhausts too. And you just keep applying until you're happy with how dark it's gone. And that is that technique. Really simple. Now once you've got powders on there that you want, and it's as dark as you want it to be, just going to add something, let me get this camera right, sorry. Just going to add something to seal those in. So I'm going to use a little bit of, there we go, contrast medium, or any medium works, Lamine medium works, even a varnish works, a matte varnish or anything that works, and you just want to get the brush wet. Some people use um, pigment fixer too, uses works just as well. I want to get the brush wet and we're going to dab it in, and this is going to activate the pigment and help it seal. Now if you use the pigment fixer, it's usually alcohol based, that'll evaporate, leaving you with dry pigments. But I find that just using the medium is enough to hold it on and achieves the technique that I want. There you go, we let that dry and show you at the end. And the final technique is probably the easiest technique out of them all. We're just going to use Abaddon Black and we're going to dry brush the end of the melt gun to represent the scorch marks. Everybody's got black. Not everybody's got black weathering powders, so that's why I've added this one in. Also, this is the way I used to do it when I was younger, before messing about with the shades. It's really quick, really simple. So, we're going to dry brush, get your dry brush, take most of the paint off the end of it. You all know how to dry brush, so I'm not going to take you through that. And then we're going to brush it this way. So the edge we're going to try and catch and we're just going to drag it down to these quarter marks on the end. Again this one you end up with no variation in the colour, it doesn't go through the blues and purples and the different browns. It's just representing soot and scorch marks on the end of the gun. Good for flamers, good for melters, Good for exhausts. Real quick and effective. Build it up as much as you want till you're happy. And there you go. If you want a really caked in suit, add more. Really simple, a little bit of variation rather than just the plain old silver end of the gun. And that's it, real easy. 
So there we have those four different techniques for techniques for doing the same thing. Two of them blend through the colors like you've got muzzle burn. Two of them are just used to represent soot and ash build up on the end. I'll give them a close up here. So this one was blending, but letting each layer of blend dry in between using the inks or the washes. This one was using the same washes, but letting them mix in when they were wet. So you maybe get a little bit less control over it. This is using the weathering powders to cake on soot on the end of it. And this is the most simple technique, dry brushing black over the end of your gun. Really simple. It's up to you to decide which one you like. No one can tell you that you've done your models wrong, can they? As long as you've done it, it's a painted model. I hope you like the video. Uh, please give it a like and a, consider subscribing to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.